to to compare those two two models and to see where we can use fuzzy automata and where we can use another computational models. Uh, so this is the outline of this lecture. Uh, it is uh, divided into five sections. I will first give some introduction on what are we uh, doing in our research. I will then provide some mathematical notions. Uh, and then uh, I will talk about this new concept that we introduced for fuzzy automata and that we call approximate bisimulations for fuzzy automata. We will be mainly uh, focused on uh, properties uh, for this notion in this section. And in section four, we will talk about the so-called factorizations of fuzzy automata by using these approximate bisimulations. We will see that we can use them in practical situations to reduce the number of states of this automata. And we'll see what properties we also keep when we factorize such fuzzy automata. And of course, in the end, we will give some concluding remarks. So let me start with, with the introduction. Uh, so first of all, uh, I want to talk about uh, fuzzy automata as a mathematical model. In fact, fuzzy automaton is a um, generalization of a non-deterministic finite automaton, which is a classical model in uh, theoretical computer science. And uh, this generalization can be treated as a special kind of a weighted directed graph. So as a graph, this fuzzy automaton has states and has directed edges between, between uh, nodes. Uh, I'm sorry, not states, but nodes. Um, but the nodes are called states in a fuzzy automaton because uh, in one time a, a fuzzy automaton can be in, in one state. And of course, an edge between uh, two states are called transitions because fuzzy automaton can, uh, can, trans can make a transition from one state to, to another uh, by using this, this edge. Uh, but uh, these the transitions are assigned uh, two values. One value is this symbol from the alphabet. So every, uh, so every automata will have an alphabet, a set of symbols. And we can make a transition from one state to another one by giving this symbol from the, from the alphabet. And uh, we do not assign only a symbol, but we also assign some weight. Uh, this weight has a meaning that it is uh, a degree uh, to which uh, a transition is made. This degree is also take, uh, taken from some uh, from some set of truth values. Uh, and uh, when the degree is zero, then we can be certain that there is no transition between those two states. When a weight is equal to one, then we are certain we are sure that there is a transition between two states and if it is something in between then the, we are uncertain it is weak to to see that there is a transition from one state to another one and every node is assigned two weights first one is a degree to which a state is initial and this degree is uh, depicted in pictures with uh, with an arrow that uh, goes to to a state so, for example, this state is uh, initial in a degree one. The, the rest states are not initial, or we can say that they're initial in a degree zero. And the second the weight that we assign to every node is a degree to which a state is final. And this uh, weight is uh, depicted as an outgoing arrow from a state. So, for example, these four states are all final, and uh, they are all final in a degree equal to one. So what can we do with this uh, with this uh, model? Uh, this model can accept uh, sequence of symbols from the alphabet, and this sequence of symbols we call words. For example, if we have our word y x y, we can see that there is a path in this graph that starts from an initial state, and here it is y x y, and this path ends in a final state. So we can say that this word is accepted by this fuzzy automata. It is accepted in some degree. We calculate this degree in different ways, uh, depending on the underlying structure of truth values, but we can calculate this weight. And uh, depending on this weight, we can say that fuzzy automaton accepts this word in some degree. 
the the greater the degree, the more we are certain that the fuzzy automaton that the fuzzy automaton will accept this word. So any degree between zero and one will indicate that the degree is accepted in some degree. So the uh, the structure of structure uh, the, uh, the structure of truth values can be different. Of course, uh, back uh, in uh, 80s when uh, the the study of fuzzy automata has started usually uh, the scholars have chosen zero one interval as the underlying structure of truth values because it is the most naturally to to observe structure values on this interval it is also linearly ordered and it has uh, uh, multiplication it has a minimum maximum value but uh, in recent years uh, the researchers are trying to broaden the structure of truth value. So usually now there are some uh, purely algebraic structures, but enriched with uh, operations that we need for fuzzy logical calculus, as we will see as we proceed with this with this uh, lecture. So this is a, a mathematical uh, definition of, of a fuzzy automaton. Uh, of course, uh, it is uh, defined as a mathematical uh, mathematical notion. It is defined as a five typo, uh, like this. So the the first component A it is a non-empty set of states or the nodes, but we call them states in in, a, in the context of fuzzy automata. We have another state which is uh, sorry we now have another set which is a set of symbols. And then we have three mappings. This mapping assigns a state, a symbol, and a state, a degree. So this is how we model transitions from one state to another, given some symbol, and we assigned these transitions some, some weight. And we, of course, have another two, two mappings. We call them sigma, sigma and tau. These two mappings will assign uh, to every state uh, some degree for uh, from the underlying structure of truth values. Sigma will be called an initial function because it will assign a degree to, to which state is initial. And tau will be called a final function because it will assign a degree to every state to which it is a final. So this kind of mathematical model has seen uh, applications in various fields. In every field where we need some computations and then uh, to to make some decision whether to do something or not, but also where um, where naturally a vagueness or impreciseness is present. Um, for example, I will give uh, some examples. For example, here in medical applications or in clinical monitoring. Uh, for example, if you have um, a, a patient in a hospital and uh, this patient can be in various states. For example, his health state can be good, can be bad, can be something in between. And uh, you see that uh, a patient from a state good can stay in this state or can go in a state bad health or it can go in a state uh, okay health. And these transitions are vague or imprecise. So we cannot say in certain that if a patient will stay in good health or it will go into the, into the bad health. It will depend on many, on many medical situations. So if we want to, to study and to, to observe a medical condition of a patient over time, uh, in such situations, it is uh, it is very uh, convenient to use fuzzy automaton as a model to to track the health status of a, of a patient. Also, very natural um, uh, applications is the description of natural and programming languages. In natural, because when we compute the distance of two words uh, with uh, fuzzy automata, you can compute them in a certain degree. So, of course. Uh, uh, two words can be can be close to each other depending on various parameters uh, and of course if we want to describe uh, natural languages another another convenient model is to use a fuzzy automaton to describe to describe them also in programming languages it is well known that uh, classical non-deterministic automata 
uh, have been applied in uh, in uh, compiler theory you know, or in implementation of compilers. So also fuzzy automata can be seen as a generalization of non-deterministic automata and also be used uh, in the uh, design of uh, programming languages. And so on, there are uh, so many uh, other application fields. Uh, I will just uh, make, uh, make a comparison uh, with uh, neural networks. Uh, there is a paper above uh, that uh, French colleagues have uh, written when they compared fuzzy automata and neural networks. Of course, fuzzy automata are much simpler. So uh, neural networks can be uh, can have many nodes and many connections between them. Fuzzy automata, of course, they have also many nodes, but uh, they're usually used uh, when there are simpler problems to to be modeled. Uh, but of course, uh, they have, uh, let me say, smaller computational power, but they are also much simpler. So when we have uh, problems that uh, can be uh, you, uh, can be implemented with fuzzy automata, it is uh, much more reasonable to use fuzzy automata rather than neural networks because of their uh, computational speed. And uh, there are also many situations when fuzzy automata are used uh, to process the input of a neural network, and then a neural network is used to, to solve a complex problem. Uh, what we have observed uh, with this uh, mathematical model, uh, well, uh, when we studied the fuzzy automata, we, uh, of course, uh, encountered this problem. So when you have a, when you use a fuzzy automaton to model some phenomenon, phenomenon. Uh, then we ask ourselves, is there a simpler version of this fuzzy automaton that, that can describe the same problem? So we ask if this uh, model of fuzzy automaton that we have found, is it optimal? Can we do better? Uh, but of course, if we find smaller automaton, that means that this automaton must be equal to the, to the starting one. And this equal means that these two fuzzy automata must accept the same words. And uh, generally, it is uh, not answered. Uh, it is not easy to answer these questions. And uh, what is even more often is that uh, the answer can be no. So, for example, when we have a complex fuzzy automaton, usually we are not able to find uh, its simpler one. But uh, in such situations, we ask ourselves, OK, if we cannot find a simpler automaton, can we find uh, another automaton that is closely enough simple to, that is closely enough equal to the starting automaton, but also, but also simpler than the starting one? So we need to, so we wanted to relax these conditions of equal automata. We don't want them to be strictly equal, but we want to be slightly different from uh, one from, from another. So uh, because we say it is slightly different, uh, we want them to behave um, almost uh, equal. Uh, as uh, as uh, you see, this problem is uh, vaguely imposed. I'm not, uh, I'm not precisely uh, defining this, uh, this type of equality between fuzzy automata. And uh, this is also uh, very naturally to, to observe on fuzzy automata, because uh, with fuzzy logic, we can naturally describe this impreciseness in, in, this, in this problem. So what we wanted to generalize is these, uh, these notions of simulations and dissimulations. Uh, these notions allow us to naturally group two fuzzy automata by the way they simulate or dissimulate each other, each other's moves. So if there exists a simulation between two fuzzy automata, then the set of words accepted by the first will be included in the set of words accepted by the second fuzzy automata. And if there exists a dissimulation between two fuzzy automata, then the set of words accepted by, uh, by both fuzzy automata will be equal. So because it is uh, hard to, to compute these uh, simulations and dissimulations, or sometimes even impossible to compute the, uh, these uh, type of relations between fuzzy automata, we decided to introduce approximate dissimulations 
we will group we will group fuzzy automata which are more or less dissimilar to each to each other okay so i will also recall some mathematical notions to see how can we mathematically precise define these imprecise um, uh, imprecise uh, ideas <coughs> sorry so as the underlying structure of truth values we take uh, uh, the hating algebra uh, because it is the most wide structure that we can apply uh, these concepts uh, what is the hating algebra it is uh, this set uh, this uh, typo sorry this typo uh, this typo consists of a non-empty set of truth values in this uh, non-empty set we will have two distinguished values we will have zero and one and of course zero will be the least element in this set and one will be the greatest element in this set this set will also be endowed with the uh, two operations uh logical and and logical on or they will model conjunction and destruct uh, this junction of uh, truth values and uh, we demand for these operations to be uh commutative associative idempotent and that both distributive laws hold for uh, for con conjunction and disjunction we will have this very important operation which will model implication uh, it is called a, a residual or a relative pseudo complement in hating algebra. Uh, it will uh, define, uh, it will satisfy the following injunction or residuation property. Uh, so we this, see this property that uh, x and uh, y less or equal z, if and only if x is less or equal to the relative pseudo complement of y in z, of y and z and uh, what this means so uh, for example if you consider this uh, logical end as a multiplication then this uh, residuum can be seen as some kind of division so some kind of residuated uh, operation of this multiplication naturally when we have a residual we can have uh, we can define b residual or b implication which will model if and only if uh, uh for truth values so it is naturally defined in the following in the following uh, way uh, sorry uh so uh usually to see what examples of hating algebra are we using in practical situations uh the most studied is the ghetto structure or the min max structure so the support set will be of course zero one interval as as uh, one of the most studied uh, uh, set of tr truth values this uh, infimum will be equal to minimum the supremum will be equal to maximum and the residual will be given in the following way of course another very important structure is the boolean algebra we will have a support set only with two elements zero one false and truth uh, uh true sorry so we will have also that uh, infimum is equal to minimum supremum equal to max and uh, of course residuum is given standardly as a as a implication in a classical classical logic so this boolean algebra will uh, will model the classical classical logic this is the simplest uh, non-boolean algebra so the simplest non-boolean algebra will consist of uh, will consist of three elements and uh, where uh, where uh, conjunction disjunction and uh, residual is uh, are given by uh, by these uh, these, these tables and there are also many important uh, algebras uh, I have uh, listed here many algebras that are in fact uh, hating algebra and all, all of them can be used um, in practical situations mm, maybe I would say only I would only emphasize that every complete residuated lattice where multiplication is idempotent is also um, hating algebra so given this hating algebra which will serve as the underlying structure of truth values uh if we have some uh, two non-empty sets a and b which we will call universes then we can define fuzzy set as mapping from a to hating algebra so this fuzzy set will will assign 
to every member of this set the membership degree to the fuzzy set. Similarly, we define a fuzzy relation between two sets A and B. Uh, we will define it as a this mapping A times B to, to H. So this will assign a degree uh, to, to a relation between every element of a set A and every element to a set B. And this will mean that uh, an element from set A, an element from set B will be related to some degree. And this degree will be chosen also from the Hating algebra. Uh, why we need Hating algebra? We need it to define these compositions. So if we have two fuzzy relations that uh, with components corresponding, uh, 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 corresponding components are the same, then we can naturally define composition of fuzzy relations. Uh, of course, if we choose Boolean algebra as the as the underlying structure of truth values, then these compositions of fuzzy relations will be exactly classical composition of uh, of uh, of crisp relations of uh, or uh, for classical relations. But in the same manner, we can define compositions of fuzzy sets and fuzzy relations. Of course, we all only need the components to be uh, corresponding components to be equal. And of course, for two fuzzy sets, we can define this composition, which will equal to the scalar from the Hating algebra. Uh, this is a very important property uh, because uh, because in fuzzy, when we have fuzzy sets, then we can measure the degree of subsethood and their degree of equivalence. Because in a crisp setting or in classical uh, classical sets. When you have one set and we have another set, then we can uh, crisply see the elements from the first set and the elements from the second set. And we can say, yes, the first set is a subset of the other set, or no, it is not a subset. Or we can say that they are equal. We go through every element to see if they are equal. And then we can say, yes, they are equal, or no, they are not equal. With fuzzy sets, it is different because every element uh, has its membership degree. So as it is uh, depicted in this picture, we cannot clearly see uh, what are the elements of the set A or what are the elements of the set B. So we need something to measure the degree of subsethood of one set in another or degree of equivalence of one set with, with another. So we can measure it with this operation. So uh, for example, for the degree of subsethood, we will see a degree to which every element of the first fuzzy subset uh, is included in the in the other fuzzy set, and we will of course take infimum of all these of all these degrees. And similarly for degree of equivalence, we can calculate them in the in this way. Of course, the degree of equivalence be between two fuzzy sets can be calculated as uh, as this degree as these two degrees of of subsets. So these are the needed mathematical notions. Let's see what we have uh, we have introduced in the theory of fuzzy automata. We have introduced uh, these uh, approximate simulations and approximate bisimulations. They will uh, they will, for these definitions we will need uh, this uh, degree of subsethood and this degree of equality. But first of all, let us concentrate on these two types of simulations. So if we have two fuzzy automata, which we will call A and B, and we also have some scalar from a complete high hating algebra, which we'll call lambda, this lambda will mean an approximation degree or some kind of threshold. We will uh, pick uh, as high as possible this, this degree from, uh, from hating algebra. So uh, given these two fuzzy automata and this uh, approximation degree, we can define two types of approximate simulations. One is lambda approximate forward simulation and the other one is lambda approximate backward simulation. This fuzzy relation <coughs> is defined uh, analytically. So it is defined uh, as a solution to some system of fuzzy relation inequalities. Uh, so analytically, what we have here is that we connect uh, initial states of these two fuzzy automata in some way by this fuzzy relation. 
here we do uh, we connect transitions in some way and uh, here we will have uh, many inequalities here we say for every x uh, from the set of symbols so for every symbol we will have this inequality so we will co uh, connect transitions for every symbol of course and here we connect uh, final states similarly for backward simulations but uh, somehow different than for forward simulations and uh, then what is the difference between uh, these two definitions? Why we need forward simulations and why we need backward simulations? So um, maybe I can uh, depict it in the, this picture why we need uh, both types of simulations. Uh, simulations. Uh, if we have a forward simulation between two fuzzy automata, that uh, we mean that we have connected uh, the nodes from one automaton with the nodes or with states from another fuzzy automaton. So for example, A1 state is connected to B1 in some degree, A2 is connected with B2 in some degree, and of course, AN is connected to BN to some degree. But they are connected in a sense that uh, if there is a path uh, in a fuzzy automaton A that goes through states A1, A2 to AN, then there will be also a path in this fuzzy automaton B that will go through states B1, B2 to Bn. Of course, there will be de uh, degrees assigned to every state. So, so that is why we need uh, the inequalities before. So we need uh, these, uh, these degrees to be correlated to some, to some way. And not only transitions, but if, of, if uh, one state in this path is initial, then we need the corresponding uh, state in the second path, in the path in the fuzzy automaton B, also to be initial. And also for final states, if, if some state in this, in this path is final, then we also need the corresponding state in the fuzzy automaton B to be, to be final. So that is why we need uh, all these uh, inequalities in the definitions. And uh, this, uh, this picture depicts forward simulations. So we uh, need transitions that goes, uh, the, uh, transitions that go uh, along with, uh, with the transition in a fuzzy automaton. And backward simulations will be backwards. So they will, um, they will uh, connect transitions in a backward direction. And if we have uh, two types of simulations, uh, then we can define four types of B simulations or four types of approximate B simulations. We will have these two, which we will call homogeneous types. They are called approximate forward B simulation and approximate backward B simulation. Forward B simulation, if fuzzy relation is approximate forward B simulation, and its inverse is approximate forward B simulation. So the fuzzy relation and its inverse are the same approximate, for, uh, this, uh, approximate simulation. Similarly, fuzzy relation is approximate backward simulation and its inverse is also backward simulation. Then we are talking about approximate backward B simulations. They are defined when we combine this, uh, these two uh, notions. Then we have that uh, a fuzzy relation is approximate forward b-simulation if it satisfies these inequalities and backward b-simulation if it satisfies these inequalities. But we also have another two types of b-simulations. They are called heterogeneous b-simulations. They are called forward-backward b-simulations and backward-forward b-simulation. So a fuzzy relation is forward-backward b-simulation if it's, it is also a forward simulation, approximate forward simulation, and it's in inverse, it's approximate backward simulation. So a fuzzy relation and its inverse are uh, different types of simulations, and similarly with, with this other type of approximate B simulation. Well, what is interesting with these heterogeneous types of B simulations is that they are uh, defined uh, almost exactly as simulations. So you will see here uh, the same fuzzy sets as here, but here in these simulations we have E, we will have the degree of equality between these fuzzy sets and fuzzy relations. And for simulations we will have S, so for simulations we have the degree of uh, subsethood. 
for B simulations, heterogeneous type, we will have the degree of equality between these two fuzzy sets. And for all types of simulations and B simulations, these degrees must be greater or equal than lambda. Of course, when we set lambda equals to one, then we obtain uh, previously known uh, notions of simulations and dissimulations between fuzzy automata. So in this way, we generalize the concept of uh, simulations and dissimulations. Uh, we call such concepts as we uh, say here, approximate simulation and uh, simulations and dissimulations. Uh, let us see uh, immediately some example. So here are two fuzzy automata. The first fuzzy automaton A will have three states and transitions between them as depicted in a picture. And uh, here is uh, depicted a fuzzy automaton B. So already when we see a fuzzy automaton A, we see if, if you, uh, despite the fact that uh, it has only three states that uh, uh, it looks already very complicated because there is a, uh, there is transition from every state to to another state, and already this uh, fuzzy automaton B looks already simple, uh, although we have only uh, one state less than in in a fuzzy automaton A. So let us see if there is some kind of simulation or B simulation between them. So if there is, for example, some kind of B simulation between A and B, then we can say that uh, B is. Uh, equal to A, so B is a simpler model to, to a fuzzy automaton A. Uh, this is just uh, uh, written in a, in a form of fuzzy sets and fuzzy relations. So these are two fuzzy automata. They are defined over the getter or the min-max structure. We will have uh, two symbols, X and Y, in our alphabet. And we will have these two fuzzy automata, which are given with this fuzzy set of initial states, fuzzy set of terminal states, and these two transition relations. So for example, when we, when we set lambda equals to one, when we set the threshold degree uh, equals to one, that means that we do not look for approximate simulations or b-simulations, but rather we look for uh, uh, simulations and b-simulations. And uh, if we put lambda equals to one, then there is no simulation or dissimulation of any type between these two fuzzy automata. So no, we cannot say that they are equal. But if we take that this lambda equals to 0 0.8, then the situation is different. We will have two types of approximate simulations. We will have both types of approximate simulations. And they are, equal, uh, they are given by these fuzzy relations. For this threshold degree, we do not have a B simulation between these two uh, fuzzy automata. So there, the, so there does not exist uh, any type of B simulation between these two fuzzy automata. But if we take a threshold even less and put it in 0 0.7, then we will have both types of approximate simulations, and we will have one type of approximate sim B simulation. We will have a lambda approximate backward forward B simulation between A and B, and it will be equal to this fuzzy relation. And uh, the rest of three B, uh, approx uh, uh, the rest of three types of approximate B simulations will not exist between these two fuzzy automata. So what are the main properties of these, uh, of these uh, notions of approximate simulations and approximate simulations? So if you have two fuzzy automata A and B, and we have approxim uh, approximation degree lambda, then uh, and we have a fuzzy relation between the set of states between those two fuzzy automata, if phi, this fuzzy relation, is lambda approximate simulation, then a fuzzy language uh, of the first automaton is included in a fuzzy language by the second automaton in some degree, but this degree is greater or equal than this approximation degree we chosen in the beginning. Similarly, if is any type of, of these four types of lambda approximate B simulations, then these two fuzzy languages will not be strictly equal, but they will be equal to some degree. 
to some degree, that will be certainly greater or equal than this threshold degree we have chosen in the beginning. There is also a theorem that says that if there is at least one lambda approximate dissimulation between two fuzzy automata, then there will also exist the greatest such approximate dissimulation. So we only need one to see that there will exist the greatest dissimulation between two fuzzy automata. And this theorem says that if we have some approximate dissimulation in a degree lambda, then it will be also uh, be approximate, approximate dissimulation for every degree mi that is less or equal than lambda. But also we have another theorem that says if we have uh, approximate, approximate dissimulation in some degree lambda, then for this degree lambda, they, we can calculate the greatest degree mi such that this fuzzy relation will also be mi approximate b simulation. And what is moreover, uh, phi will be also the greatest such mi approximate b simulation. So what does that mean is that uh, we have some uh, interval of values. And in this interval, all the greatest approximate B simulations will be the, the same. And uh, another question that really arises is that um, is there another uh, kind of uh, relation between um, these uh, approximate simulations and B simulation and their approximation degree? So as we uh, see here, there are some connections. So we, we see that uh, we have some interval of values where uh, that will share the greatest uh, approximate simulation. But uh, are there some other connections between, between them? Can we calculate uh, those uh, degrees for some types of uh, approximate simulations and dissimulations? And uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is possible. So there are some three important theorems that I have uh, depicted in the following slides. So uh, for the sake of simplicity, uh, I have written here approximate backward forward dissimulations, uh, but uh, the same holds also for any type of simulation or dissimulation. So what we have here. So if we want to study uh, approximate dissimulation between two fuzzy automata A and B, so uh, a fuzzy relation, uh, one fuzzy relation must uh, satisfy these inequalities and uh, these values must be greater or equal than some threshold lambda. So for example, take a fuzzy relation phi one that is lambda approximate B simulation between these two fuzzy automata. So this means that these values, all of them must be greater or equal than lambda. We will have lambda in this uh, in this expression, and take another fuzzy relation phi two, and suppose that this fuzzy relation is mi approximate b simulation between a and b. So this fuzzy relation is approximate b simulation in some other degree. So we want to connect these two degrees, but uh, we cannot connect them only like this. So we need another value here. So in lambda infimum, this value. This value is the degree to which these two fuzzy relations are equal. So this is how the theorem theorem uh, holds. And of course, we, because this uh, uh, this value is symmetric because a phi one phi two is equal to a or phi two phi one, we can also have another direction. And as an implication, we have that this uh, this equation holds. What is a practical consequence? If L is linear and the order skating algebra, then if this approximation degree is smaller than the degree to which phi one and phi two are equal, then lambda must be equal to mi. What does that mean? Because if you have two fuzzy relations and they are both approximate simulations, but they're very close to each other, so lambda is uh, smaller than this uh, degree. So we, let's say they are very, very equal to each other. Then it is naturally to, to see that if uh, this first fuzzy relation phi one is lambda pro approximate simulation, and this is mi approximate simulation, but they are very close to each other, then this, uh, these two degrees will be equal. 
Otherwise, this degree of uh, equality of these two fuzzy relation will be less or equal than infimum of lambda and mi. We will have another theorem, similar theorem. So take uh, approximate B simulation between two fuzzy automata A and B. And we will have approximate B simulation between another two fuzzy automata A prime and B prime. Let's take a fuzzy relation phi. And let's say that phi is lambda approximate B simulation between A and B. So it will satisfy these inequalities in a degree at least lambda. And let's say that the same fuzzy relation is mi approximate B simulation between another two fuzzy automata, which we denote by A prime and B prime. So we also want to connect these two degrees, lambda and mi, but we can connect them with this, uh, with this value A. And this value A is uh, the degree to which fuzzy automata A and A prime are equal. In FIMUM, the degree to which fuzzy automata B and B prime are equal. Of course, they are equal by naturally taking, taking these values. And this is how the theorem uh, holds. So these degrees will be connected in this, in this relation. Of course, again, we have an implication given like this. And of course, we can uh, also connect uh, these uh, degrees of equality of fuzzy automata with these approximation degrees. I will not uh, put uh, any more details in this theorem. And uh, the previous two theorems can be combined in the single theorem. So if we have two fuzzy automata, uh, so if we have two fuzzy automata A and B, and we have another two fuzzy automata A prime and B prime, and we have one fuzzy relation that is approximate B simulation between the first two fuzzy automata. And if we have a second fuzzy relation that is mi approximate B simulation between third and fourth fuzzy automaton, then we can connect fuzzy automata by this degree A, and we can connect uh, fuzzy relations by the degree how they are equal to each other. And uh, this is the, the way the four degrees are connected. Again, we will have the implication. And again, we can compare the, these uh, degrees. Uh, OK, and uh, we, will say, we will see some uh, practical applications. So by now, we have seen uh, mathematical properties that hold for approximate uh, simulations and dissimulations. We have seen that uh, there are some properties that hold for uh, for these approximation degrees and for the corresponding approximate simulations or dissimulations. Let us see how we can uh, use these uh, dissimulations in practical uh, situations. So if we have a fuzzy automaton, a single fuzzy automaton, then we can use these uh, dissimulations to reduce the number of states of, uh, of this fuzzy automaton. Because uh, if we have a fuzzy automaton and we calculate approximate B simulation between a fuzzy automaton and itself, then uh, we will have a fuzzy equivalence on this fuzzy automaton that we can uh, use to merge states of a fuzzy automaton. Uh, if we merge the states of a fuzzy automaton, then we call the resulting fuzzy automaton the factor fuzzy automaton. We will denote it by a uh, a cross uh, phi. This will mean the, the factorized fuzzy automaton. And we will have theorem then uh, that says that if we use a lambda approximate simulation of any kind, then uh, the fuzzy languages of these two fuzzy automata will be greater or equal than the threshold degree lambda. So here is also an example. You also, we will take a ghetto structure as the underlying structure of truth values. And we will take a fuzzy automaton A with uh, one symbol X. This fuzzy automaton will have six states. And I have given fuzzy automaton with fuzzy sets uh, of initial states and final states and a fuzzy transition relation because a graph will be more complicated. It has uh, six states and there is an edge uh, between each state. And uh, now it is more convenient to represent fuzzy automata by these fuzzy vectors and fuzzy matrices. 
And uh, if you take uh, lambda that equals to one, then uh, if we use uh, exact uh, non-approximate uh, B simulations, then no reduction is obtained. Then uh, according to these uh, equivalents, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, merge uh, states and we cannot make a reduction of a fuzzy automaton. But if we take a threshold 0 0.7, then uh, we have approximate forward dissimulation that is equal to this fuzzy relation. And when we reduce a fuzzy fuzzy automaton, then we will take uh, we will get a reduction to four states. So this factor fuzzy automaton will have four states. We have a reduction from six states to four states. Uh, uh, I have not written here, but if you compare the languages of these two fuzzy automata, one can see that uh, they differ only in uh, in an empty word. So uh, that is totally okay. So we reduce it, uh, but we have a difference only in one word with uh, with the behavior of these uh, two fuzzy automata, which is absolutely okay, absolutely acceptable. Uh, so these uh, approximate B simulations can be really uh, eff effectively used for factorization of uh, fuzzy automata. Uh, let me also note that uh, no reduction of other types of approximate B simulations can be made uh, for uh, for other fuzzy uh, for other types of approximate uh, B simulations. So uh, what I want to stress here is, uh, as we see in this example and in previous examples uh we can use any type of approximate b simulation to reduce so we hopefully uh, uh we hopefully want to uh to make a reduction in the sense that uh for a single fuzzy automaton there will exist uh, any of these four types of approximate b simulations but uh, maybe someone will give uh, a reduction of uh, states of a fuzzy automaton but uh is there any difference between these four types of approximate B simulations? So uh, is it the only difference? So we have four state, four types, and we calculate all of them, and we hope that some will give a reduction. Is there any other difference between them? Why do we need four types of approximate uh, B simulations? Uh, is the only advantage that one may exist between two fuzzy automata and the other not? Uh, so we have also answered uh, this question in a recently published paper. Uh, and I want to uh, firstly introduce the concept of uniform fuzzy relation. It is a special fuzzy relation between these. Uh, these are not fuzzy automata. These are the uh, regular sets. So if we have uh, one set A and one set B, and the, let's say that we have a fuzzy relation between two fuzzy sets, uh, between sets A and B, uh, then we want to impose some uh, natural conditions. So, for example, we want uh, this to be H function, which means that for every element from this set A, there will be an element from the set B, so that they are connected in the degree 1, so that we are sure that we are connected. And similarly, so reactive fuzzy relation for every element in the set B, we want that there exists an element from the set A, so that they, they are connected in a degree exactly one. And we also add uh, uh, that uh, if E is partial fancy function, that it satisfied, satisfies the following uh, condition. Then a uniform fuzzy relation is uh, a fuzzy relation that satisfies the previous three conditions. And why uh, uniform fuzzy relations are important? Because if we have this set A and set B, and we have a uniform fuzzy relation between them, then the kernel of this fuzzy relation, kernel and co-kernel are defined as classical, uh, as in a classical mathematics, then kernel of this fuzzy relation will be a fuzzy equivalence on A, so we will, uh, so we will uh, merge uh, and uh, factorize this, this set with these uh, equivalence classes. And uh, this uh, uh, set B will have a fuzzy equivalence, which will be a co-kernel of this of this uh, fuzzy relation. So, according to this co-kernel, we will have a fuzzy equivalence on this fuzzy set B, on this set B, and we can also factorize this set with this uh, fuzzy equivalence. So, 
uh, in which connection is uh, our uniform fuzzy relation with this approximate B simulation. So we will see in the in this theorem. So we will firstly focus on this homotypic approximate B simulations, and we will show a theorem for forward B simulations. But the uh, identical theorem is for backward B simulations. So if we have two fuzzy automata A and B, and let's say that we have a uniform fuzzy relation between their set of states, then we say that phi is lambda approximate forward B simulation if and only if the following three conditions hold. The first condition, we will have this kernel. It will be a fuzzy equivalence, but this kernel will also be lambda approximate forward B simulation on this fuzzy automaton. So we can construct a factor fuzzy automaton. Then co-kernel on this another fuzzy automaton B will be also lambda approximate forward B simulation on this fuzzy automaton. And we can construct factor fuzzy automaton for this second fuzzy automaton. And the third condition is that there are some kind of homomorphism, which we call lambda approximate homomorphism between these two factor fuzzy automata. So uh, let me focus on three, three uh, things. The first thing is that uh, all three uh, fuzzy relations are the same type. So they're all uh, lambda approximate forward B simulations. So uh, that means that uh, for very large fuzzy automata, uh, this can be applied for very large fuzzy automata because for if we have very large fuzzy automata, it is almost in, it is impossible to find B simulation between them. But uh, if you take uh, lambda approximate B simulation, then you can uh, connect uh, these two fuzzy automata with a uh, uniform fuzzy relation, which is depicted here. Then furthermore, you, you can factorize the first fuzzy automaton. You can factorize the second fuzzy automaton. So you can find uh, small- Excuse me, uh -huh. you have five minutes. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. You can reduce the first fuzzy automaton, you can reduce the second fuzzy automaton, and then you can connect these two factor fuzzy automata. And the other direction also holds. So uh, we also have if this, if we have fuzzy relation and kernel of this fuzzy relation is lambda approximate forward B simulation, co-kernel is lambda approximate backwards B simulation, and there is a connection of homomorphism, a kind of homomorphism between these two factor fuzzy automata, then the starting fuzzy relation will be also lambda approximate forward B simulation. For heterogeneous types, we will have a slightly different situation. So uh, for heterogeneous types, if we have, for example, backward forward B simulation, kernel will be approximate forward B simulation, but co-kernel will be approximate backward B simulation. So for heterogeneous types, kernel and co-kernel are different types of B simulations than phi. And what's even more, kernel and co-kernel are mutually different types of B simulations. So that is uh, this slight difference between approximate types of, uh, of B simulations. There is also another theorem, which will, I will also, uh, I will also uh, show here, is that if we have two fuzzy automata, and then we have a fuzzy equivalence on a first fuzzy automaton, which we call theta, and we will say that it is lambda approximate for the B simulation, and on another fuzzy automaton, we will have another uh, fuzzy equivalence, which we call, uh, which will be also lambda approximate forward B simulation. And we construct factor fuzzy automata for these two, for these two fuzzy automata. Then the following two statements are equivalent. The first statement is that there will be a uniform lambda approximate forward B simulation between these two fuzzy automata such that kernel of this fuzzy relation is equal to theta and co-kernel of this fuzzy relation is equal to chi. And the other is that there is approximate homomorphism between these two factor fuzzy automata. And of course, the other direction also holds. So if there is an approximate isomorphism between these two factor fuzzy automata, then 
the this first uh, statement will also hold. And also similarly, we will have a situation for uh, heterotypic approximate dissimulation. So we will have that these uh, three uh, fuzzy relations are all of different types. So let us give uh, a concluding remarks in uh, in the end. Uh, what we have introduced here are the notions of approximate simulations and approximate dissimulations. They allow us to to find the equivalence between fuzzy automata. Uh, so we say that they are equivalent to some degree. And uh, as we show by examples, uh, this uh, equivalence is very good because you say that we can say that two fuzzy automata are equivalent and we can find uh, simpler versions of uh, fuzzy automata, uh, which we would not strictly equivalent, but they will differ uh, very little. They will differ in uh, in uh, uh, in some words, which we can uh, disregard uh, very easily. So, uh, we have showed that uh, between these uh, factorized fuzzy automata, they will hold some kind of uh, mathematical notions of uh, approximate uh, isomorphisms. Let me say that we have also. Uh, developed algorithms to compute the greatest approximate B simulations, as well to compute the greatest approximation degree for, for which this B simulation exists. Uh, I have not given uh, these algorithms here, but of course uh, you can see them in our published uh, papers that I will show you in the end. Um, let us um, let me know that uh, we have uh, we, uh, the uh, promising lines of research is to apply these uh, concepts on other graph-based models, not only on fuzzy automata and fuzzy graph-based structures, but uh, to apply something similar to try to apply something similar on other types of graph-based models. So these are the recently published references that uh, that uh, that I have shown results uh, from these three papers. Uh, for more details, you can read these papers or you can contact me, of course, for for any for any uh, for any details. And that will be all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your interesting talk. Unfortunately. We are a little bit out of schedule. That is why, dear colleagues, you have a possibility to ask one question, please. Who has a question? Okay, in this case, I have a question. Uh, at the beginning of your lecture, we uh, you have uh, given long list of possible uh, applications. My question is uh, about process mining. Is it possible to apply for process mining this fuzzy automata? Uh, process managing or mining? Process mining. Ah, uh, process mining. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to to that question. Maybe, maybe I have not seen uh, such applications, but uh, maybe it is possible. I will. I will need to to check uh, Google and uh, Science Direct to, to see if it is possible. Uh, okay. And uh, if we apply this approach to in the real world problem, uh, where from can we get this uh, uh, fuzzy uh, rules, fuzzy states, functions? Human will suggest or it could be done automatically. Uh, so your so question is, uh, this, uh, can this be done automatically, right? Yes, to generate this fuzzy automator for real world application automatically. Uh -huh. um, uh, well, um, usually in the real, uh, in a real world, uh, for example, in these medical situations, we firstly construct uh, some kind of uh, fuzzy automaton. Because we usually, when we construct fuzzy automata, we start from the language. And then uh, we generate a fuzzy automaton that accepts this language. And this fuzzy automaton, uh, when you uh, construct this automaton, it can be uh, it, it can have it can have many states uh, that are uh, redundant. 
uh, and it can be complex. And uh, in that uh, in that moment, we ask ourselves: Is there a simpler a simpler model? So uh, uh, not at the beginning. Me. But uh -huh. for example, you you need a membership function. For example, and membership functions can be different for different uh, applications. How can exactly. you guess which one is the best for this application? Oh, it depends on the on the application field. For example, this ghetto structure is only uh, is only one of the possible uh, possible underlying structures. For example, we are also very used is product structure. So product structure is on the zero one interval, and as a multiplication, we have the regular multiplication on zero one interval. Uh, but this, uh, for example, we cannot apply these types of approximate simulations and these simulations on this underlying structure of tr truth values. So these uh, these uh, these notions can be applied only on the on hating algebras and only in situations okay. when uh, hating algebras are used as the underlying structure of truth values. Okay, thank you, thank, thank you, you very much for answering my questions, and you are welcome to join other <clears throat> participants of conference, ladies and gentlemen.